Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, for today's quick vid, we're gonna take a look at my Lelia, recently reclassified as Catlia purpurata, and her bud. A few days ago, I showed you a picture of her with the bud just starting to break the sheath. It took me a little by surprise, and I'll tell you why. But considering I took the picture just a few days ago, look how much it grew. It grows so, so fast. The bud, I mean, not the orchid herself. So I know it looks a little weird, but this is what happens. The bud is really, really heavy and at some point it does start to flop over. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. So this is the entirety of my Lelia purpurata. I shall call her Catlea just to be politically correct. This is a very large orchid. If you didn't know anything about it, well, it is one of the largest Catleas that you can have. The pseudobulbs are pretty substantial, the leaves are pretty substantial, thank goodness she's not a bifoliate, and also the sheaths are substantial as well. And that's the problem with the Catlea purpurata in cultivation. Not only the sheath is quite impressive, it is also thick. It's almost the same as the leaf, really. Some orchid growers prefer to cut the top of the sheath off because there is a slight chance some of the buds will get actually a little damaged while trying to open the sheath. A Catlia sheath is actually a modified leaf, but it has an opening on one side. Theoretically, that opening should be pretty flexible, and it is in most cases. With the Catlia purpurata, this sheath is just so thick, it takes a lot of energy and power for the bud to actually emerge from the sheath and free itself. And this is a very good and advanced protection mechanism. It protects not only from the elements, from wind, rain, pathogens, and so on, but also from pests. This sheath is shut close. I don't even think spider mites can enter inside it. And that's actually the role of the sheath, to protect the buds. So if this is her role, why does it actually sometimes damage the buds? Well, it's priorities. Even though in nature aesthetics is important to some degree, in the sense that if a flower is just so distorted that pollinators cannot even recognize it, and let's say the flower doesn't have a scent to attract pollinators, then the flower's role is pretty much useless. So aesthetics is important, but it's not as important as protection. It's better to have flowers with a little bit of damage than no flowers at all. Flowering takes just so much energy that it makes sense to develop protection mechanisms for at least the flowers to have a chance and develop. In many cases, Catleas which don't produce sheaths end up with eaten buds or damaged or even ripped by the wind or other animals. Who knows, really? That having a sheath offers indeed a great, great advantage to some Catleas in some parts of the world, not all of them. It really depends on your location and your environment. But for us humans, aesthetics is pretty much everything, so we do want to make sure that there is no possibility for the buds to get damaged or deformed as they're growing. And for the Catlea purpurata, it happens sometimes, so most of the times people just snip the top of the sheath. Not the sheath entirely, just the top when they see something growing inside it. What I did with mine, because I did not notice the bud, and I'll tell you in a second why, what I did with mine was just to press on the sides like this, and that actually opened it up. I managed to rip it a little bit so it stayed open. And pretty much I freed the bud which started to extend forward since it was actually kind of struggling to emerge from the sheath. And as you can see, I only have one little bud. Well, it's not a little. I only have one bud on my Catlia. It would appear this bud, it's still there, but it never actually formed. Well, this is the very first time this orchid blooms, which is nice. I purchased her two years ago. She was near flowering size or something of the sorts. It took a little bit to establish. So let me show you the past of the orchid. You can actually see the past, see the history. This is the last bulb it came with. It produced this one, you see how tiny it is. Then it produced this one, which is bigger and more substantial. The next one was this one, which as you can see, it already has a sheath and it did start to produce something inside it. But that something sadly never developed. It started in full winter to produce another bulb, which is this one, the latest one. And surprise, surprise, it started to produce a sheath at the same time. And as you can see, the bulb is not fully mature yet and the orchid is flowering. As far as I read and I research, this is not typical behavior for the Catlea purpurata. 
usually what happens is that the sheath is created and then you kind of need to wait until spring of the next season for the buds to start to develop. It also takes a lot of time for the buds to grow and emerge, again as far as I can see. But you know, orchids are not always following the rules, no matter what those rules are. And behold, uh, this orchid created two pseudobulbs, or actually three, not entirely sure. It might be two and a half pseudobulbs in one year. This one was created in the winter time. It's not, so far, it's not as tall as the other one because it was winter, but it managed to bloom. So the buds actually grew very, very, very fast, unexpectedly, and really not so typically for this orchid but I'm happy. Now the Cattleya purpurata comes in many many different varieties actually, even though she is a botanical species, she's not obtained from the wild though. So for the Cattleya purpurata, both in nature I believe and also in cultivation, we have a lot of varieties. If you research a little bit this orchid, you will find purple purpurata, which is actually what the name suggests. Purpurata refers to purple, but you will also find semi-alba varieties and alba varieties. You will also find my favorite one, the carnea variety, which is a semi-alba with a very nice coral color on the lip. You'll find a cerulea variety, which is close to blue, and so on and so forth. You'll find quite a lot of varieties on the market with this one. Mine is supposed to be a purpurata crossed with semi-alba, but I'm not sure if the seller, which is catacetum too, by the way, I'm not sure if you wanted to say it's a semi-alba. Purpurata semi-alba, but he just put a cross there. Because the bud absolutely looks like a semi-alba. I don't see any striations on the petals thus far. <laughs> we shall see. What I do see though, and I'm not gonna stress the bud way too much. Do you see that color? That's the lip. So I see really dark purple on the lip. And if I look at the pictures, that kind of resembles the variety Shasteriana. It's a semi-alba form. And if that's the case, I shall be madly happy because my second favorite, apart from the Carnea, which is my favorite, is the Shasteriana. So I really, really hope she will not have any striations on the petals, which would be a different form in its own. I really hope she will be semi-alba and with that really dark purple lip. And to clarify a little bit what's with the alba or semi-alba varieties in Latin, or at least in Romanian, my language, alba means white. It's the feminine term for white. And pretty much that's what it refers with orchids as well. It's a form that lacks a pigment. A totally alba flower will be white. A semi-alba flower will be partially white. And in the case of the Cattleya purpurata, it means that the petals and sepals are white, but the lip presents a color. I am a person of contrast. I love white contrasts, white with something else. So you can imagine, I'm very, very excited for this little girl. So even though we only have one bud and typically the circuit can produce up to three, I'm not sure if four, but two, three buds it can produce, it's the very first time it blooms. And if it will turn out to be the Shasteriana, I will be tremendously happy. So alrighty guys, this has been the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. I cannot wait for the orchid to bloom and show it to you. I have been wanting a big, big cat layout for a whole lot of time. And I've been having this one for two years. It's been sort of some stuff. It's been the orchid that I kept featuring when I had the root burn issue situation. She pulls through, she's just a uh, really, really vigorous grower. So alrighty, you know the drill. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye.